What's up guys and welcome back to the Shop TV. My name is Mike. On the last episode we cut out some boxing plates or actually fish plates for our step notches. This episode we're gonna get them cleaned up and get them welded in so that our coilovers have a nice flat surface to mount to. Looks like we got a pretty good fit up. I went a little bit extra here and I just drilled a few holes and uh, chamfered them a tiny bit so we can weld in some rosettes and just uh, get a little bit of extra peace of mind. Alright guys, so we're here at the back of the truck and it's time to start talking about coilovers. What we're going with here is a coilover by Atco. This is called their Street Rod Series. Um, this is a 140 pound coilover and I know people are going to think that's a little bit light, but I tend to think that people really overestimate what they need in the back of these trucks. Typically when you hear pickup truck, you want to use a much heavier spring rate because trucks haul things, right? You're going to be using the bed, putting stuff in there. That's not what's going to happen on a truck like this. This is a street rod or a hot rod or whatever you want to call it and uh, there's gonna be nothing in this bed ever. Um, so 140 pounds is actually probably, by my calculations, even a little bit on the stiff side. And that's gonna be okay though, because what happens is I'm gonna mount these on a slight angle as opposed to up and down. They'll be kind of at, I think the calculation I came up with is about 11 degrees, 12 degrees. And what happens is when you mount these on a slight angle like that, you lose a little bit of spring rate. I think Speedway Motors actually has a kind of a handy chart online if you guys want to check that out. You can look up the percentage of spring rate that you lose based on installed angle of the coilover. It's kind of a cool reference to have. Anyway, 140 pounds is probably the right number for us. And again, you could always just swap out springs if it doesn't work out for whatever reason. But I think we're going to be pretty well in the ballpark. Let me get you turned around and I'll show you how we're going to mount these up. Well, we've made a mess of our floor with grinding dust from putting these plates on. But anyway, that's our bracket down there. Our coilover basically just slips in and there's two spacers that um, go in between that bushing and a bolt, ties everything in. And then we're gonna come up with a mount um, to mount to the side of our boxing plate here. A concern that I'm having is this sticks out um, a little bit further than our axle brackets here, about three inches. And of course it's gonna put the base of our shock out towards the wheel and then leaning in towards the frame. Now that's not a problem, you kind of want that angle because the closer you have the bottom of the spring to the track path of the wheel, and that angle again stops some body roll, so that's kind of what you want. However, I really wanted to use a 20 inch wheel back here, um, like 20 by 10 to be exact, and that might encroach on the width of the wheel that we can run. I think it might be okay, I don't have the rear wheels here yet to check it out, so we're kind of taking a gamble with this. Um, I did some measurements and it looks like this is going to be six inches off the ground at three and a half inch tire approximately and then the wheel itself is probably going to take up about an inch or so of diameter so you probably should have about an inch and a half two two inches of clearance before a wheel hits this anyway but it's off centered meaning it's not in line with the axle shaft here it kicks out to the side by about six inches so you know a wheel is obviously round so the lowest part will be over here so I'm kind of, it's going to be kind of close where the wheels radius starts to come up like this. You know, I'm not sure if it's going to clear. I think it is. My measurements are close, but without the wheel here, I just can't be positive. So for the sake of the video and for expediting getting this project done here, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and mount them in this configuration for now. Um, if they fit with the wheel, when we get the wheels in, perfect. Mission accomplished. That's exactly what we want. 
If the wheels look like they're going to contact us or rub, we have no choice. I think what we're going to have to do is mount it in a straight up and down orientation um, with just a bolt and a spacer here in our bracket. And we'll use the same bracket that we're going to install now for the coilover. That's fine. You can definitely do that. Springs up and down. Actually, you'll get the, the true spring rate of 140 pounds. And there is a little bit of discrepancy because some people say that having the spring up and down is, you know, you want the spring and the shock damping in line with the, the actual travel. So that is technically straight up and down to get the best performance out of the shock and the spring. However, angling the shock gives you a little bit of the best performance out of the vehicle to, to prevent that body roll a little bit. So it's kind of a give and take. I guess it really begs the question is, what do you want to do, right? Or what do I want to do? Do you think that running the size wheel that you want is the way to go and you should sacrifice a little bit of maybe the performance of the vehicle or the body roll to go with the diameter wheel that you want? Or should you just worry about the function of the body roll and go with a skinnier wheel and tire? I know um, the logical thing would be to go with a smaller wheel and tire. Um, it's a little bit difficult to swallow that when you put in so much time and so much money and effort into a build and you just kind of want everything exactly the way you want it. So um, I know, I, I, think, I think that in a perfect world, this all works out. We're gonna have our spring on an angle and that wheel's gonna clear it and everything's gonna be just perfect. So let's roll with what we got for now and get this sucker installed. All right, so our coilovers are mounted up and ready to go. Our fish plates, our boxing plates are ready to go. I have to clean off this area to get clean metal. And I went ahead and hacked up some of the brackets that came with the kit. They had kind of side pieces on. I took them off and just made straight standoffs. So we're gonna go ahead and get these mounted onto the coilover, press them up to where they need to be and start taking some measurements. All right, so we've got these bolted on. They're not really touching, they're just kind of sitting there. Um, mounted length on these is exactly two inches shorter or two and a quarter inches shorter than this extended length. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark down from here um, by two and a quarter inches. Put my mark, lift the frame up, and then tack it in place. And I'm just gonna put some small tacks just strong enough to hold this or hold the weight of the vehicle. I'm not gonna weld it in yet because if I need to cut them and make some changes if it doesn't look right, uh, we'll be able to do that. So just, uh, I guess, one tack here, 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 and here on the bottom, and we'll see what we look like. All right, we're tacked on. Moment of truth. I'm gonna let this sucker down on the blocks on its own weight. If it all collapses, you guys will be here to witness it on video. All right, here we go. That's a good sign. All right, let's give her a little push. All right, some things to note. So my math kind of worked out good. I don't know if you can see it, but my pan hard bar is not level anymore. It's kind of leaning a little bit on a downward angle. Now, you gotta remember, there's no weight on this bed. So I have the coil springs raised up about three quarters of an inch. So, I mean, I could lower them right now and then we'd all be level again. But when we put the bed on and the bed floor and all that good stuff, I'm gonna, I might put a gas tank back here, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna lower up a lot more and then we'll have the ability to raise the coil springs up or down to find out you know or exact where we need to be but right now i'm pretty happy with that exactly what i was looking for i wanted it to come down to the point where the panhard bar would be slightly uneven to indicate that we're not loaded up fully so i'm gonna go ahead and get these welded in all the way and i'm gonna call this coil springs done
actually just had my wife come in here. She had her sitting right up on here. She's about 140 pounds. And the, the truck frame leveled out perfectly. The panhard bar became nice and straight. Um, I figured the bed, with everything, when it's all said and done, might be somewhere in there, 140, 150 pounds, give or take. Um, that's kind of the beauty of coilovers too, is that the axle brackets have adjustable holes so I can move the whole coilover up or down if I need to. And then the coil springs themselves, themselves obviously are adjustable to give us a little bit of height or to drop it a little bit, whatever we need. So, but right now we are right in the ballpark, which is exactly where I wanted to be. Um, I'm sure there will be some adjustments when we do get the bed on and get it all kind of figured out and see how it looks. Also, these are gonna settle. Even over the next couple of days, they're gonna kind of settle down a little bit and things will look a little bit different uh, in a couple of days. So um, I'm happy with how it turned out. It's, it's exactly what I was hoping for, nothing more, nothing less. So uh, mission accomplished with that. Right now, it's time to pick a winner for that level giveaway. All right, guys, we're gonna paste our video links in here. Keywords on, we're gonna put subscribed, whoops, subscribed. Uh, let's see here, pick a winner. No, I'm not a freaking robot. Pick a winner. Nick. Nick, who are you? So Nick, it looks like your actual screen name is MellowYellow89. Um, if that's you, get at me, send me an email. Click my description in my video and down at the bottom is my email address. Send me out an email, give me your information, your address and all that good stuff and I'll get that digital level sent out to you ASAP. Guys, I wanna thank each and every one of you for subscribing. We hit our 1,000 subscriber mark. I could not have done that without you guys and I really appreciate each and every one of you guys being here. That's gonna do it. I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Thanks again, see you next time.